So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a program to move around a circle. So we're going to look at the circular instruction. So uh, I've created a program called circle underscore example. And you can see the teach pendant is off. So the first thing we have to do is turn our teach pendant on. And you can see the robot is mounted here up above this circle, which is actually kind of inside of a box. So I've got the box there so you can just kind of see the tangent parts. But what we need to do, uh, first thing in our program we should usually do is go ahead and set our user frame and um, tool frame. So you see I've got tool frame one, user frame zero. I'm going to just go ahead and add those instructions. So we're going to go to the next page and offset frames and I'm going to choose the user frame number and I'm going to cut arrow down select constant for that. And so I'm going to make it the user frame zero which of course is just my world frame. And then I'm also going to go and select instruction, next page, frames again, and I'm going to add the tool frame number, and I'm going to make that just a constant again, and that's going to be tool frame one. So I always just like to start off programs with what frames those programs are designed for. So when you start running the program, it'll automatically set it to whatever frames that your program needs. And then I'm going to create my home point. So I'm going to go to next, choose shift F1 and create a point here, which is motion instruction uh, J joint type and point one, which I'm going to label as being my home point. So that's just like my safety point in the program and I'm just going to set the speed of that slow it down a little bit for because this simulation software runs so fast now if you have a home point uh, in my opinion you really don't need to have a fine termination there so I'm just going to do it because the home points up in in clean space anyhow so um, safe space so I'm going to choose that as just a continuous 100. So we really don't want to stop there. We just kind of want to make that as a, a starting point, not a stopping point. So I'm going to select that. Now, what we need to do here, though, is we learn to look at this circle, right? We need to be able to come to a point on the circle. So this is one of the things that's very confusing if you've never done circular motions. Think about trying to draw a circle on a piece of paper. Well, you pick up a pen or a pencil or crayon or whatever you're going to draw with, and you're holding it in your hand, but if the tip of that is not touching the paper, you're not drawing anything. And that's the exact thing for circles. When you want to try to do a circular motion, you first have to get the pen to the paper or get the tool center point to the point the beginning point of the circle. So to do that, it's not a circular move. It's either a joint or a linear move. It could be your choice which one you're going to use to get there. Uh, normally a joint motion is probably going to be a smoother one. So I'm going to say I want to bring this down here to one of the points in here and I want it to just move around the circle. So I'm going to drag my robot here over to this point and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see you know how close I actually am to that point and get the robot in there and just make it as close as possible there to that point just try to make some slight adjustments here and just kind of get this 
as close as possible by zooming in or if you're actually doing it on the real robot you know you just you need to be careful but get your head in there enough that you can see where you're at so you can be as accurate as possible so that's going to be my first point and of my circular motion so I'm going to uh, select I'm going to press F1 without the shift and you see that I don't have a circular choice there so I could either edit these by selecting the edit definition or I could just hit previous come back go to a point uh, shift F1 and add a point and then come here and choose the type to be circular okay or no this this is to get to the circle I'm sorry this is I'm still got to get to the circle so this is to the circle so I'm going to make that a joint motion okay and so this is um, get to the circle right so I still I have to get to the circle uh, and I kind of ran out of space in my comment there but this one's to get to the circle now I'm going to add a point so my first point on the circle I get to it I get to the first point on the circle by doing a joint motion could be a linear but it's not a circular motion you got to get to the circle before you can start doing circular motions so then I'm going to go clockwise around this so I'm going to move the robot over to this corner now or this um, I guess it's a circle technically doesn't have a corner but I'm going to move the robot over to this side of the circle at a 90 degree so I want to make a I want to make a complete circle here so we're going to bring this over here and try to get this as close as possible okay and if I'm not close enough the programs actually not going to run but I'm just going to go with this for the moment and I'm going to do a shift point again but now I'm going to come edit this point go to choice and select circular okay so this is going to be circular and the point that I'm at is point three which is the is actually the second point in the circle Okay, so second point in circle. Okay, and then what I have to do is I got to drag the robot. See, I, now the circular command takes two points. It only has one speed, but it has two points. So I, now I got to drag it over to the second point in the circle. can't quite click on my TCP at the moment all right and of course we could always use the uh, guess this point seems a little low actually so I, I see I, as I as I'm trying to grab this point I see that that it actually is a little bit low here So I'm going to um, jog my robot up. So I'm going to go back into world mode. Shift plus Z. Whoa. And jog it up a little bit so I can even grab this. On here. All right. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back up to the top of this and I'm going to touch that point up just a hair because I think that point was a little bit too low. All right. And so now I'm now maybe it's a little bit too high. So I'm going to touch it up one more time and you, you may have to touch it up again if the program doesn't work when you're done. But I'm now going to. Uh, bring my robot
over to this point because I want to go around the circle clockwise. Okay. And so that bring the robot over to this point here. And you want to kind of line that up. So my Y want my Y to be about zero, which is center. Okay. And so that is my next point. So I'm going to come down to the second part of this and notice that the touch up moved from F5 to F3 and I do a touch up here and now that creates the next point in my circle. Okay. And so then I'm going to move over here to this point of the circle and I'm going to do a shift point again which is a joint type so I'm going to modify the joint back to a circular and then I'm going to um, I want to go back to the beginning point because I want to make a complete circle I want to get back to the beginning point well the thing is I've already taught it the beginning point which was back here at line four, which was point two. So I'll, instead of jogging the robot there, I can just say, go back to point two. So the points on my circle now, the points on the circle are actually uh, point two, point three, point four, point five, which was where I'm at right now, and then returning back to point two. Now I'm looking at point two, and point two I can see is actually um, too low, and so I need to go back to point two. So I'm just going to um, arrow back to the line here, and I'm going to do, I'm going to slow this thing down because it was moving really fast. Shift plus Z and just jog it up. Actually, I want to move. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my step on and do a forward. Okay. And let me edit my point two here. And my Z of point two. I'm going to make that about a, well, I'm going to look and see what my other Z was. So what was my Z here? Position, my Z was minus 127.5, give or take. So I'm going to make this Z minus 127.5. All right, so I got it up on top of the circle instead of actually inside of that. Okay, you see how that popped up. All right, so now I'm going to go back. To line one, and I'm just going to walk through this program. So it's moving up into this home position. Then it's moving to the circle using a joint motion. Then it's going to move over to point three. So remember, it got to the circle as a joint. But now it's going to move over to point four. Then it's going to move over to point five. Then it's going to move over to point two again. All right, so see, it, it starts on the circle. We got to the circle on line four as a joint movement to get to the circle. And then the, the next points, there's two points in the circular motion, but they're not the first point on the circle. They're the second and the third points on the motion. And then if you're doing a full circle, which you may not need to do a full circle, but if you're doing a full circle, you're already on the circle at point four. So then your second circular motion will take you to point five and then at point 
back to the the starting point on the circle, which was point two in my case. All right, and so you can see here if I take step off and hit forward. All right, you can see it just goes home, comes down with the joint motion, and then goes around the circle. That's one circular, and here's the second circular. Now, one thing I kind of saw there, and I didn't say anything about it at the moment, but I do want to make a point of it, is that if you take like point five here, and I'm going to change the Y of point five. Before I do it, I want to see what it is. Um, so Y is a 104. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my Y way in here like this. So now it's instead of 104 it's at 39 and so I'm going to try to run through this program one more time starting at the beginning remember when you change a line number and you try to tell it to start usually if you didn't finish a program you'll get that warning message but now notice here it gets to point four okay and it actually worked on point five which I didn't really expect that but I'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'm going to run it over here once and I'm going to try to run it again. So notice how close point four and five are now. Uh, and I want to start back up here at line at the beginning of the program. So I get this warning message. Okay, so it's uh, using a joint to get to the circle, then circular to do the first half of the circle. Okay, and it's actually completing the circle, although the, my five was actually off quite a bit, so it's running it. But a lot of times, I'm, I, it seems like you can't get the error when you want. But uh, so let me try this one more time here. All right, well, it's just telling me I'm getting a degenerate circle. So, but the other number, if you were paying attention or go back in the video and look, I didn't stop it at, at that point, but sometimes you get that the points are too close together in the circle. So if you get that, if you get some kind of message like the points are too close together in the circle or something along that line, then, you know, that's telling you that, you know, your points aren't, lined up where they need to be for a circular motion. They're too close together or they're too far apart or some kind of error that they, and you will not get any kind of circular motion at all. All right, so, um, so if you see that, you just have to adjust it and do a touch up of your points. So let's just reset this. Uh, this point should be 400 and this point should be 100. Okay, and that gives me a perfect circle because I happen to know that this circle is a diameter of 200 um, millimeters. And so that's why I could punch those numbers in knowing that. All right, so I'm going to start this back at the beginning. Say yes, it's okay to start at the beginning. Reset. All right, so it's going across the first circular motion instruction and then the second one. So remember, in the second, the second one is returning back to point two, which we got to the circle. Point two is on the circle, and we got to the circle by using a joint motion. And then we went halfway around the circle using the circular motion, which would gave us point three. And then 180 degrees around the circle using point four. And then 270 degrees was over here at point five. And then we just returned back to the beginning of the circle at point two. So that's how we do circular motions in the RoboGuide software or on an actual FANUC robot controller.